the good girl complex, the mentality that forms as a result of social interactions and behaviors and expectations that tells us as women that we need to exemplify this good girl persona to get the validation that hearing this phrase gives us. Good, of course, is a word with positive connotations. The Cambridge Dictionary defines it as meaning very satisfactory, enjoyable, pleasant, or interesting. And thus, hearing this phrase is easily tied to affirmations, and it generally just has nice connotation. When we listen to our elders, follow instructions, act affectionately and gently, are always happy and polite, and most importantly, don't fight back, we're told that we're being good girls. Yes, these are all traits and actions that seem great to have and perform at first, but when we take a closer look at can just be harmful for women. It teaches us from a young age, from even the very simple act of giving up that toy we really wanted to play with in kindergarten to someone else just because they seem to want it a little bit more, that we can and we should sacrifice our own wants for those of others. And this phrase and its implications ties into many of the roles that are normally assigned to women in society, being the housewife, caring for the children while the husband goes to work, being personal health care taker, and generally other nurturing jobs. Being called a good girl doesn't just leave it at that, though. This phrase also tells us that, hey, when we do fit into this neatly and nicely constructed little box of what a good girl should be, when we follow orders and bite our tongue, we are going to get praised, too. So we start to associate certain behaviors with the positive reinforcement we get from this phrase and then we just keep doing them over and over and over again for example if a woman is being openly made fun of in front of her friends they may know that talking or replying isn't seen as good so they just sit listen take it maybe even laugh it off Embodying this good girl attitude, even when it's not really good or, frankly, even healthy for them just to be sitting on their emotions. Now, this may not be as big of a problem in society if all genders were treated the same way. If women weren't the only ones subconsciously associating a submissive set of actions with a certain phrase. But the fact is, this particular list of standards including items such as being good, always meaning, expressing, and having these really positive emotions all the time, pretty much only applies to women. The American Psychology Association reports that psychologist Sandra Thomas describes this as a product of gender socialization. UNICEF defines gender socialization as a process by which individuals develop, refine, and learn to do gender, through internalizing gender norms and rules as they interact with key agents of socialization, such as their family, social networks, and other social institutions. Now, Dr.
Dr. Thomas says that this phenomenon has made emotional expression vastly different between men and women. Men, on one hand, have been told that they should be open with their anger, especially deal with it physically. And it's seen as something that is more manly and masculine, and therefore, it's acceptable for them. They're unconfined. There's absolutely no ceiling or restraint holding them back from expressing the anger that they may feel. But she says, on the other hand, that women are more encouraged to repress their anger. Anger is seen as a more unfeminine emotion. And so they are told to deal with it more passive aggressively. We might not be able to even tell or even see it, but there's this glass ceiling that over the years we've formed over our own heads. One that tells us that we should hold off from saying how we feel, even though anger is a valid and natural emotion for everyone, regardless of their gender. This inner coding that tells a woman that she's less of one because she feels a certain way, while a man isn't told anything at all, is just another way that the good girl complex and its expected behaviors hurt women. Because it's pretty much exclusively harming us. It may seem pointless or nonsensical to make something out of a two-word phrase most people don't use maliciously anyway. The impacts of what being called a good girl does aren't that obvious either, right? But visible or not, they are there. And because of the mentality that this phrase perpetuates, that women should be serving others, even a woman's success and their leadership is defined in a biased way. The Harvard Business Review analyzed a study exploring the words used to describe both male and female leaders who had pretty much the exact same performances best on a set list of their measures. Their analysis found that the positive word most commonly used to describe men was analytical, while for women, it was compassionate. Even though both genders' performances were pretty much the same, they were obviously characterized differently. Being analytical is a testament to a person's work ethic or their strategic skill, while being compassionate speaks more to how you treat others in the workplace. It's not necessarily negative, but not exactly praise about your professional capability either. And that's how women are being defined today. Not only as different from a man who did the same work they did, but yet again, just by how good they serve others. The main problem is that now, without even realizing it, women and little girls are growing up associating being called a good girl and the validation they get from it with being quiet, with taking a step back, with putting their own dreams on the back burner just to help with someone else's. And as we get older, we start to do things to please other people because we think that we're going to get the same praise and validation we so desperately crave if we do. And it doesn't help that this phrase isn't exactly one that's dwelled on. It's used pretty frequently and lightly, like the replacement for a thank you at the end of a sentence after a woman does something good for someone else in their life. But despite its very common use, this phrase carries with it a heavy weight. Why are we only being called good girls when we follow someone else's instructions? Give up an argument or concede something that we really want, or when we just shut up, sit still, and look pretty. Of course, it might not be intentional, but regardless, the use of this phrase only at very specific people-pleasing times can push girls into smaller boxes, into taking up less space, into cowering or hovering in the corner of a room just because they want to be called good. Because what happens when women try to break through the ceiling of this good box? Well, as evidenced by the 2016 United States presidential election, when former President Donald Trump called former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton a nasty woman during their third presidential debate, people get mad. And suddenly, we aren't even good when we do something good for ourselves, but we aren't even powerful or assertive or any of the things a man would be called for doing the exact same thing. Apparently, we're just bad. So we refrain from even putting our hands up and trying to push on the confines of the good ceiling over our heads because now the reality is we're absolutely terrified about what could happen if we really do break through and all those shards of good girl glass rain down on us. 
We don't want to be called of or even thought of as bad, so we just stay on the good side of things. The good girl complex does not make any sense. Serving other people and putting their needs over yours is not behavior that should be associated with any positive word. And objectively speaking, women aren't any less good because they're assertive or because they want to learn to be. We know that as women, we have every capability and right to be powerful in leadership positions and to speak about how we feel. Because it's true. When you think about it, there is no real reason at all that justifies keeping women locked up in an invisible cage of societal standards at all. But after years of getting used to feeling guilty for being human, this can be hard for women to believe. How could we possibly think it's okay to break our good girl ceiling? How do we get the confidence to be a Taylor Swift in a world full of scooter bronze? It seems unfathomable, especially when, as Time's Up now reported, a fourth of coverage on current and first ever US Vice President Kamala Harris's performance during the vice presidential debate didn't even reference any of her professional qualifications as a female politician, instead saying that she was uncooperative and too ambitious, feeding into the expectations of what a good girl apparently shouldn't be. It seems terrifying to stop acting like a good girl. On a widespread scale, the consequences can include being canceled like countless female celebrities have been over the years for no good reason. And on a personal level, can include having to have negative and difficult conversations with people who might not really get it. But as the Miss Americana Netflix documentary showed us, it is so important and so rewarding. So what can we all do to make it a little bit easier to rewrite this narrative? The first thing is awareness. This complex and how many women feel as a result of it may be unfortunately so normalized, but they are still so real and so present. To a wide range of extents, this complex and the societal expectations on women can and probably have impacted all of us, including me. In order to do something about it, we need to know that it's real and it's happening. The reality is we are being put in situations where we are inherently invalidated on the basis of our gender, and this can impact how we are being treated. This isn't okay by any means, but it's something we have to acknowledge, swallow, and work on. So making sure that we recognize our feelings are there and that this phrase makes us feel a certain way is so important. Second, we need to validate and affirm how we feel. We as women deserve to have and feel every feeling under the sun and do what we need to do to make ourselves happy. Even if the only reason we have for our actions is to help us nurture and care for our own well-being. We have no reason to feel guilty for being mad or by being hurt by someone else's actions or for feeling like we deserve more than we're getting at the moment. All of the emotions that can rise to our surface should be felt expressed and embraced, not hidden, pushed away, and ridiculed. It sounds silly, but it's true. Women should be proud of themselves for having emotions in a reaction to any situation, for being able to put their foot down and say no, and for being amazing leaders. But third, and probably most daunting of all, we need to act on it. Obviously, the most difficult step. It's really easy to say a lot of this, to come up and give a speech, or to even double tap affirmation posts we see while scrolling through our Instagram feed and to manifest being assertive, but actually doing something tangible about it, terrifying. But this doesn't mean that we should just leave it alone. Getting rid of layers upon layers of entrenched societal expectations and working on becoming somebody everybody tells you you can't be is beyond hard that's okay. It's a learning curve that every woman can and should work on. The initial first step can feel like punching through the roof of that glass ceiling. Hard, painful, uncertain, and it might cause a bunch of emotional scars. 
all the fear and anxiety that comes with standing up for yourself for the first time. But eventually, it's just about letting those scars heal over time. And this will get easier and easier and easier. But on top of working on it on a personal level, unpacking this complex is also about recognizing how our own actions can hurt other women in our lives. What harmful stigmas do we hold that make us view a woman's personal choices differently and negatively without any valid reason or basis? We should reevaluate how we want to uplift other women. Instead of judging a girl at school based on a rumor you offhandedly heard or even criticizing a female politician for being too angry, we need to stop and think. Is what they're doing actually hurtful and wrong? Or is it just contradicting what we've been told is acceptable for women? And again, there's absolutely nothing wrong with thinking things through slowly and doing things like, for example, taking time when speaking to someone to make sure that you're responding from a genuine place and an unbiased place of care and support instead of lashing out and acting on your behaviors by saying things you can't take back. The good girl complex is, in fact, very complex. It won't be undone overnight, and while that's definitely not ideal, that's completely okay. The most important thing is that we, and all women, begin to recognize what being good should really mean. It shouldn't be acting and hiding your real feelings to seem more good on the outside, and it certainly should not mean just being good for other people. Being good should really mean being good and true to yourself. Thank you.